13. And welcome to a four. Yeah, cheery me. The deployment zones are kind of weird there. One, two, three. Ah, it's no, no. There is a four. <laughs> yeah, no. It's just kind of odd the way that they meet here. Okay, cool. Anyway, ah, uh, oh, so many trees. We will, um, we will do our best. With this, but yes, yeah, so this was Steel Bow Ranger. Uh, with this little four-man free-for-all. Oh dear, this is going to be tricky. So. We can maybe, what we'll do, just for a minute, is lower the vegetation quality. It might give us a better sight of his army. And they'll bump it back up for the actual battle. We've got the Trolls of Gundabad there. Snaga Archers out front. It's good that we've got this from Angmar's perspective, because he'll have the most hidden units, actually. That might be Mirkwood over there. Uh, Orc Fellers there. Gundabad Guard some pikes mixed in with the Gardens of Karndoom. So this is an absolutely solid line there, especially with all those armor upgrades. Barrow Whites up front, good and bad guard, as I say again. Hammer Guard with that armor upgrade. That's where the General is? Yeah, no. No, he's not there. Uh, so there must be something hanging about that is carrying the General. We've actually started. Warg Riders. Everybody deployed really fast. Um, and then the Inquisitors over here. This is where we have the General. I don't usually have a Mounted General. I think it's just because there's so much solid like infantry bodyguards that I never really see the need for them here. Uh, what's all the way over here? Some Trolls of Gundabad. Now, they, they might have gotten forgotten about, but we'll see. First of his adversaries is Mirkwood with the Edge of the Blade. Never seen that guy before. Uh, so yeah, I, I thought this might be Mirkwood, so um, there's going to be a lot more hidden units from him. Cinder of the Girdle over here. Herioth, some Heri Lang. Some more Herioth and Heri Lang. Uh, back here. Oh, yeah, jeez. Oh, yeah, you see, uh, Bows of Eventwear. We're just going to have to call things out as we see them appear uh, because Mirkwood's army is going to be entirely hidden, really. Uh, some Heri Peng out front. We can see these stakes, so there's probably another unit Heri Peng there. And some Heri Egg behind them. Lots of armor upgrades, though, for Mirkwood, which is not a bad idea. Good. There is a nice spread out section, but I doubt we're going to be getting much fighting over here. Uh, we have Sin of the Dark Cloud playing as Numenor. So we've got Numenor and Shield Guard there. Lots of Numenor and Shield Guard. Seafarers of Nandamos. Royal Legion of Armenolos. Farsam Swordmasters. Cohort there. Cohort. Steel bows, steel bows, and some royal guard. Very, yeah, yeah, pretty high quality throughout it all, in all honesty. Not a lot of belly guard, just a bit. Um, yeah, okay. It's not a bad idea for a free-for-all to go, like, super elite, because, yeah, I do like to have some chaff to just kind of soak up damage, though, in all honesty, and make people think I'm involved in the fight. And then another unknown name, 2017 Harrison Wells. We've got his pikes up front, an armor upgrade, no armor upgrade for those pikes, no armor upgrade for the Athelan men at arms either. Some Dornarnal swordsmen as well, Tornastian spears, uh, Belfless marines, archers, Tornastian spears again, swordsmen, goodness me, this is heavy numbers, black swan renegades behind them, and the haven guard. Okay, uh, oh, good, we do have some cav, knights of the silver swan. Knights of the Silver Swan and Haven Knights. Okay, I'm a. I don't know how I feel about that army. In all honesty, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be tricky. He's gonna have to be careful with it. But the issue, because he's not really delved into the supreme quality that Dol Amroth can bring, he will melt in front of Angmar, um, and of course he'll melt in front of Numenor. But we'll we'll roll with it and see how we get on. Uh, that cavalry. Yeah, I mean. Definitely, Angmar's got a lot of tools to deal with the Cav. These war riders can really tie you up. He, the Haven Knights will chew through these guys. Ugh, the Inquisitors, though. Mm. But no, as, as with a free-for-all, you always just have to be wary about who and when and how you're engaging. Sin is actually moving up real fast. When you are by yourself, like Sin, it's, it's a good idea sometimes to deploy further back and then move up. Uh, let me turn on those tree graphics again. Uh, vegetation up. And hell, let's get some grass too. Why not? Um, I Yeah, I'll, I'll play with my brightness setting at some point. I just saw that there. but No, uh, so it's a good idea to move up though. Um, especially if everybody else has deployed quite far forward. Because it really... If they're smart, they're going to quite quickly see that you're hanging back and they should team up on you. 
Uh, all of Angmar's army here is is not really great to shoot at with these uh, these sort of low damage arrows that Harrison Wells is is opening up with. So and he's not got a lot of armor piercing apart from his Black Swan Renegades. Like these pikes are going to be getting barreled through, and the swordsmen, these sort of lower tier swords. I just don't know. Um, had we had this been a halberd line instead of a pike line. I would feel a lot more comfortable about what is about to take place. Um, but as I say, I'm interested to see how the Haven Knights do toe to toe with the the Wargs. Sin's rushing on forward now. Way well, is still moving, but it looks like Merkwood, Merkwood's staying in place, um, not revealing his army. Uh, like, I mean, all of his enemies are clearly, like, merging on each other. So this is where it's going to come down to them, like, if and when they do decide to have a go at Mirkwood. Are they just going to let him sit by or not? Because it really, usually what you get in a four-man free-for-all or, or an eight-man free-for-all is two of the sides will sort of go for each other. Ah, no. Nah, dear. So Harrison might be a newer player there. And just coming straight on into the Gundabad Guard like that and the wargs, these poor guys are going to get massacred. That's a that's a damn shame. Um, no, nah, sort of busted up there. Oh, well, I mean, hey, he won't do that again. That is uh, that is certainly something. But he's going to need a hand if he's going to go to go go to toe with this heavy, very, very thick Angmar force. It's filling them with arrows, but as I say, the sturdy armor, the Barrow Whites there... They can shrug off that ammunition all day. Like, that's not going to be a threat to them at all. And this real power from the Knights of the Silver Swan is is just about gone there from Harrison. Um, we'll just have to see. Yeah, he's kind of boxing up. Yeah, he's fully boxing up here, which it's, 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 a, it's an impulse when really you might want to get... You might want to actually go for it. Because this is just going to allow Steelbow Ranger to do as he pleases, to sit up in however way he wants. And it's also Numenor's coming in from your back like that. I think Harrison's going to be sort of sandwiched between these two armies. And Dol Amroth just doesn't have the the infantry rigidity to, to hold out against that. Had he been dwarves, has he, had he been his, his ally Gondor perhaps, but yeah. And yeah, these wargs just hunting down the last of the Knights of the Silver Swan. And, uh, and dealing with them. The last of sort of Harrison's uh, exceptional tools. He does, he has managed to keep these 18 guys safe. A group of like higher quality lancers like that can be very useful in the later stages of a free-for-all or the later stages of any battle. So hopefully they can survive. Simple, he's such a blob, but like this would normally be really bad to arrow fire. Uh, but no, when, when it's when it's lower damage fire, Belfast Marines opened up there, but the Barrow White's there just to soak up that. If you want to, if you know, they'll die to javelins, but I'd much rather lose a few Barrow Whites to my ja to javelins than pikes or, or guardians, for instance. Which a few of them have died there. I'm surprised that Steelbow Ranger was so tightly packed. I felt that maybe that was a bit too close together. What do we have over here? The Edge of the Blade is coming forward with his cav, but the bulk of his army is still more than happy to stay. He's going to be able to micromanage the hell out of his cavalry by coming forward like this, though. That'll be all right. But still, um, I would I would be watching that. Definitely, I was if I was like Sen, who's not really engaged properly yet you will be wanting to keep an eye on how much or little... Oh, wow, they're close together. Is this... Are these archers totally alone? There might be an alliance. You do get little alliances forming in these in these free-for-alls, but... I think we might be seeing these poor Snagger archers about to get devoured. Um... Are they royal? No? No, it looks like this is a bit of an alliance, just uh, fighting side by side here, to just fill the uh, the Dol Amroth box with arrows. And this is, again, being being bottled up like this, you're such an easy target. 
uh, for for archers, even being sort of shielded and, and armored up. I do love the door uh, the Dornernal swordsman units. It's that little round shield. I don't know what they're what it is about sort of round shields. I just like them. They're just neat. But yeah, getting shot at sort of from all sides here. Um, what the real menace is when you're in a box is when the archers can get close enough that they can actually shoot over the front line and hit the line past them. That's uh, that's always the beautiful thing. Okay, warg riders look like they're off to go and respond to the the Sindar. They don't want to be getting go toe to toe with the Inquisitors. You can deal with some wargs for sure, but and again, Merkwood is is holding in place. There's this routing unit off over there. I suspect that's some cavalry. Yeah, it's probably some of the Knights of the Silver Swan bolting out off the field there. Yeah, Belagar. Oh, there are some. There's more Belagar units than I thought there were. Definitely want to open up with them, but you want to keep those steel bows for the actual. You know, when when push really comes to shove. Um, yeah, perfect. This is what I was talking about there. Uh, if you can get a shot into the back of another line of defenses, Harrison's just sort of dug his own grave here um, with this box. You can get away with this in a lot of total wars. But in Medieval 2, it's not... Like, Rome was a big thing for it. You know, where you could just sort of bottle yourself up because archers were not really such a big thing in Rome. You could you could box and you'd be all right. Now, you've got a feel for Harrison here, though. He is, he's is—he's got enemies on both sides. Um, and he's, his army currently is, is too weak now to do what he... I mean, maybe it always was. I was thinking, sort of, as soon as I saw the uh, the Angmarim kind of fronting up on me, when they were still crunched up together like that, I would have maybe lurched at them. Now, then you run the risk of Numenor um, just coming and smashing you from the back. But you know, if they if they want to do that, they're gonna do that. I would have maybe just wanted to lurch at Angmar, really pound away at him, may, you know, possibly keep my cavalry safe. Uh, sacrifice my infantry and just see what I could do with my cavalry later on in the fight. That could have been the option that I would have gone for, or just maneuvering out of the way. You know, as I saw Numenor coming forward, try to fall back to here um, so that you're all still facing each other, but when you're boxed up like this, it destroys your maneuverability. You just can't. Uh, is this some movement from Mirkwood? Nope. Nope, not yet, not yet. The bows of Emendwyr and the Sindar of the Girdle still remaining steady. Um, I'll I'll say it now. Um, there is one. There's a battle I've got in my replays. Now I'm going to go on a bit of a hunt to try and find out who sent it to me, but it's called a something hideout, a shadowy hideout, or something. It's some something hideout. Um, it's a five v three that somebody sent me. And I don't have the map that goes along with it. So if, uh, and I can't see who sent it, I might have deleted the chat that you sent it to me in. So if you've sent me that, then please uh, send me another message on Discord because I need to grab that map from you. Um, so, you know, hey, it takes me a long time to, to get around to some of these battles. So it does get a bit kerfuffled. Yes, yeah, still. And it looks like, yeah, okay, these guys are out of ammunition. These guys are out of ammunition too. Okay, well, at least Sin and also, I mean, Merkwood knows that they're not really going to have any fodder archers to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. What I think is generally being decided here between Angmar and, and Sin or, or Steelbow, uh, yeah, Steelbow Ranger and Sin is, like, we're going to fight Dol Amroth together. We'll destroy Dol Amroth together. And then we'll go and fight Merkwood together. I think that that's what's been, um, and then at the end of that, we'll we'll fight each other. That's what it looks like right now. And Merkwood, I think he's starting to pick up on that. But I don't know. Like if if I was Merkwood, I think the time has already passed. But I would have wanted to move forward so that when this clash actually began, I was in a position where I could start hammering Steelbow Rangers back or I could start really attacking them properly. I think that, as I say, that moment has passed now, and all he can really do is is hold and prepare for the oncoming storm. Uh, when, and, and I guess really hope that Harrison Wells is able to, to deal with a, a good chunk of these forces. 
and perhaps even that they do have a little bit of a clash together. My goodness me, they're... Oh, I thought these Blackstone Renegades were, uh, were Numenorean men, but they're not. I need to grab a little image. This looks quite nice. Go for something like that. A lot of nice silver armor clashing against one another. A few of these black armored seafarers of Dendamos. Again, a lot of those jabs used up is a beautiful thing to see for Mirkwood. But I need to do something with his cav. I mean, what you... It would be a very tempting thing to come in and smash the Snaga archers, but that would not be worth your while. You know, you'd come in there, you'd kill like... 50 snag archers but then you take a volley or two from the royal guard and it would just be like nope and the poor sindar not being heavily armored being unshielded they can go down really nicely by arrow fire the knights of silver swan they're bottled up there's no they could have maybe escaped out this way but if they did they could get grabbed by anything so they're just having to be sent to the front line as infantry we're in like warhammer 2 I'm, i've been doing a lot of uh, playing a lot of bretonia recently in warhammer 2 so it's been, um, you know, it does get to the stage where you've just got to use your cav as infantry in some cases. And that's really what's happening here with these knights of the Silver Swan. But with the pikes there, it's just a grind. It's just, doof, doof. this is what Angmar does really, really well. Just grinding down more, more disciplined forces. Or higher quality forces, you could really argue. Uh, these Haven Guard really not able to get in range to slice them down. I'm sure Mirkwood will be very sweaty at this time. So it's, and you know, throughout all of it. So I'm kind of, I'm pretty sure Steel Bow Ranger and Sin, unless they have a goof here, or Mirkwood does something really fantastic, uh, I'm pretty sure they can deal with Mirkwood after, um, after all this is done. So it's going to be who takes the most damage after all of that. I like this armor-piercing maces from the from the Black Swan Renegade versus the armor-piercing spears of the Numenorean Shield Guard as a, as a nice little matchup. Tarnastian spears broken there. Black Swan Renegade's coming on in. It does look like, for now, Steelbore Ranger is having the better fight. You know, which what you're... Even though these Numenorean core are so high quality, they're still having to get up in the faces of their enemy. Whereas the pikes of Angmar are keeping the enemy at bay. And um, and that's possibly a big factor. Are these... The Belagar units still have ammunition, though. Probably not much, but they've still got a bit. And that's going to be a useful tool, for sure. But I think overall, um, Steelbow Ranger can be very happy with how that's turned out. Now, we're going to have an age. I'll probably speed it up. Uh, in a moment, because I think we will have an age as those Barrow Whites move forward. Um, as the last of the Black Swan Renegades go down. Haven Knights pulling out here. Yeah. Um, dear me. I see. Um, I'll mention it too, uh, just because Dol Amroth is on the field. Uh, we've got uh, Bilbo's ultimate compilation mod or ultimate no it's not it's not yeah yeah i think it is ultimate compilation mod um in that he he's made a few little additions a few little changes and so on to various factions and i know dol amroth has really received a lot of his his attention so it's it's definitely worth a check um if you have if you know nothing about it or if you haven't done so already and if you are a big sort of dol amroth lover um, yep, falling back from each other now. Very well done here, guys. Just not, you know, nobody's really taken. There were very, I, I, I don't actually think there was any, but if there was, there was very, very few uh, casualties taken bashing against each other. So we'll go into two times speed for the minute as everybody shuffles around. Yeah, of course, um, Harrison Wells has actually admitted defeat there. So anybody that was still standing, the Haven Knights there uh, are gone. The fellow men at arms looked like they had maybe run away, but uh, but no, they weren't really going to be able to achieve too much, unfortunately. So yeah, that was just the case there. Um, just a new player, like new players will generally be a lot more passive than than more experienced players. Uh, not always the case, but it generally is that. Um, so they will always tend to favor defensive play uh, over over being aggressive, but. There's a lot of times where, as we can see there, being too defensive can result in your your death. 
and I think maybe had he been a bit more aggressive, yeah. But it's, I think, overall, the main problem for Harrison was just underestimating wards, underestimating spears, just not knowing the stats of units. Like, I, I watched these battles, and I, I, I couldn't tell you the exact stats of any of these guys, but even for my lesser played factions like Lothlorien, I know what these units are capable of. I know what they're about. And... Um, and I think that was just something that he, he wasn't aware of. So we can't really knock him too hard for that, of course. Uh, we all have some of these dodgy battles early on. Uh, in addition to that, one thing I always sort of like try and hammer home to new players is just the the difference between what I would call my th the three types of cavalry. Uh, now, you could definitely argue there's different types uh, above that. But um, for me, I think we've got melee cavalry, so like wargs. Hey, uh, not even nice wargs, mercenary cavalry, you know the types of cap and, and inquisitors here, you know really the guys are much more about getting in the fight and killing other cavalry. Uh, then you have your lancers, the the knights of silver swan. They are to be killed by melee cavalry. They are to wipe out infantry, and then you have the knights, which are the best of both worlds, of course, and just being very expensive. This is it's it, this is not news to anybody that's really played the game for a while. But it's just, um, this is one thing that I think often differs. Well, it's, it's something that definitely does mess with new players. And it's it's working out, or at least remembering, um, what type of cavalry is the type of cav that you're, you're about to face off against. You know, just because you see it, like, it's got a spear out, is it going to be a lancer? Is, it a, is, it, is that a spear cavalry? You know, so that's always something that I, I say to people. The Edge of the Blade, they're unfortunately getting caught by the, by the Royal Guard, losing, I think losing micro on these guys and allowing them to get caught like that, which I, you know, Edge of the Blade, you got to be, got to be on the ball of that, there's not too much going on for you, so you, but it's, it's all right, he's still got his ammunition, and he's rattling into Numenor, which, I mean, maybe, maybe that is better, because as I say, Sealbo, what I'd be wanting to shoot at, are the warg riders if i had a horse archer i would be blasting those warg riders myself that's that's who i would have targeted uh steel bowman's army nah you don't want to be shooting at that but but his archers yeah now because there's two full armies here what we're either going to get from the edge of the blade is is going to be another box or it's going to be he's going to have to like really turn and face both sides Oh, oh my god, look the freaking range of these guys. So impressive there uh, from those elven archers. But yeah, just rattling some shots into them. Using their ammunition at this max range. You know, I mean, hell, yeah, if I could get a shot on the wargs, I'd take it at max range. With an elf, with an elven archer, totally. Um, and yet that's Steel Rangers booking out of there. But I think Edge of the Blade's going to fire every shot he's got into... Oh, don't shoot into the snag archers. No. This is... Oh, this, see, this is sort of bullying a new player here. Um, hopefully they hold fire. Hold. Hold. El no, hold your damn fire. Oh, well, at least we can sort of see some of the extra units here. He's got the elders of the Elven King. Here you're lying, here you're Althiana. But, okay, sort of, yeah. This is the... Ooh, damn. A lot of fire. So, Royal Guard. I mean, yeah, Numenorians, Numenorian cohort. If you can shoot their right side or their back, perfect. But shooting them right in the face, even with this high damage arrow fire from the Hiri Peng. Uh, I don't know. Um, I'd maybe want to be holding my fire myself. I'd say I'd like to think that I wouldn't get into this sort of situation. But I'm trying to imagine like what I would do if I was here now. When I am in a free for all, I'm, I always deploy right in the goddamn. I, like I, I talked about that a lot in the in the Silmarillion battle. Um, I deploy right in the center of the map. I just like to do that. Um, I like to. If I'm in a free for all, I am claiming the map. You are you are fighting on my battlefield. What you choose to do with that is up to you. But this is my field. But yeah, um, so that's what I always tend to do. So I wouldn't have really been here. Hopefully, I I would be dead by now. In all honesty, <laughs> but yeah, um, I would have been Harrison. <laughs> Oh, the shadow bows. Oh no, shadow bows up against lightly armored Merkwood as well. Or maybe up against that nicely 
nice and dense pink block of Angmar. We'll see you when... I think Sin's going to be careful. I don't think he's going to use that until he needs to. Um, hopefully he won't just see a nice opportunity to get a bunch of elves kill, elf kills and just rattle the shots away. Hopefully he'll he'll hold out um, and uh, do it when it's necessary. But yeah. Um, no, I think we're I think we're at two times speed again. Because let's see, the Barrow White's going to slow down this situation. He's coming forward with his wargs again. He's in range with those wargs. Three off, shuffling around. Uh, the issue is like having Hirioth by themselves they can be just cycle charged down by the works so mm, it's, it's nice to have them on the front line I think once again these pikes it's you know Merkwood kind of deals with pikes by shooting at them <laughs> oh nice catch up oh, good stuff from those uh, that, yeah let's go to one time speed here Nice little close range volley into the Warg Riders with those Greenwood Watchers. The Ents coming over. Um, a quick charge into the Ents would yield some good damage, but no, not worth it. Not worth it. Get out of there, boys. Um, Kiri Peng taking fire. Thor shooting up and over each other. As we continue to rattle into the Numenorean lines. Steel bows, again, a heavy armor and shields. So, maybe not your best target. I mean, the whole of... Oh, oh, Sen is going, man, with the shadow bows. Yep, so this is what... This is the tempting target. I don't know if it's the right target. We'll see. Um, we'll have to see how that plays later on. But this is, this is where you'll do the most damage, for sure. But I don't think it's where I would have taken. Oh, come on, the edge. Just, yeah. You got to get yourself back there. Because once again, they're just kind of going to bully him with, with their arch archers. And then. Had these been jabs, then we would inflict a lot of casualties here. But throwing daggers into the front of Barrow Whites, that's a shame. That's a real shame. And the interesting thing is, like, those Greenwood Watchers will do okay up against those Barrow Whites in melee. But, um,. Even lacking like armor piercing melee because they're so so skilled, they'll do all right. Um, nah, because it's such a low amount of damage that the Barrow Whites do. I think back uh, there was a there was there was a time when the thieves of Tharbad were armor piercing in melee before they received a, a throwing knife, and um, I don't believe that they're still. I don't use them in, anymore, but. Um, they used to be my go-to Barrow White, the Harvester. Like, they, I, I, I'm going to use the word Harvester, because that's exactly what they were. You could just have one unit of thieves, just like, they were locked morale, so it's like the scary Barrow Whites weren't, weren't going to mess with them. Let's go for something like this, too, just in case I, I don't like the other one. Oh, there we go. But yeah, um, so very, uh, you know, they weren't scared by the Barrow Whites, and they were just, like, very skilled. Ooh. Okay, they're actually not doing so well over here, up against these Barrow Whites. And over here on the left, damn, maybe it is just lacking that killing power that's hurting them. Having this sort of spread confrontation. Looks like the Ents have actually been caught now by this mob of cavalry and Orc Fellers. It's the Orc Fellers moving amongst all of the... Oh, wow, ouch. He's losing wargs for this, but, you know, it's... You know, maybe it sort of is worth it. And now with this beefy unit of orc fellers in melee with the with the ants, yeah. Those poor ants are goners now. And the I I like yeah, the edge of the blade is he's not gonna be taken the same way that Harris is. He is lurching forward, which I definitely appreciate, but um he sort of split his focus a bit. Uh, it's just not gonna Wardens uh Wardens of Ammon Lank in there now. They'll slice through now, I think he'll have a much better fight up against Numenor than he will up against Angmar. All he's really got up against Angmar are his assassins, and Steelbow Rangers got his, his wargs. They're free and clear now. They're in behind his lines. They can start cycle charging around. The Ents are gone, almost. Yeah, that's another Ent down. Yeah, they're almost wiped out. How are the assassins doing? Slicing down a few more of these guys. Uh, now that the pikes are moving forward, 
There's little close range daggers. You can do, you know, all your ninja flips you want. You're not really going to be able to stab a guy that's, you know, holding a pike against you. Elders of the Elven King enjoying that fight against the Steel Bowman. Belgar Archers coming on forward to, uh, to try and assist. Really paying there. Yeah, as I say, like, it looks like Sin is a bit more spread out than, uh, than Angmar is. And I think it's lacking cavalry is going to be, uh, be a nuisance for him later on. He has actually had a... Well, the Wardens of Amon Lank are still in the fight, but yeah, it's a good surround here. I should probably zoom on it, Ash. Zooming in doesn't really help because it is just this mob of red dots, but we will zoom in anyway. Um, those Fires and Sword Masters are still around. As I say, I think when it comes to this final confrontation, which is what we are gearing toward, and both of the players will be thinking about it, it's going to really be how much damage can Angmar still do with his wargs and his inquisitors. Um, yeah. The Barrow Whites should be... I mean, God, that's still 143 Barrow Whites. But they'll be hurt. Like, the numbers may be, may be a bit of a lie. They have received a lot of fire. So they will definitely be hurt by that. We can see the balance of power is, is about midway now. As the last of the elves are dead. And this sort of is becoming a 1v1. Mashing the way through the area, but some broken units there. Yeah, like as you know, the edge of the blade put his elders up against Numenor, and he also put his wardens of Amon Lank up against Numenor. Maybe Sin was a bit too bold charging in and fighting here. Maybe like I don't think he needed to do this. Um, but maybe they, I guess they were shooting at him. He did need to stop from doing that, so that's fair. That's why he did it. But. Royal Legion, my men are lost. We see these rangers out of, are out of ammunition now, unfortunately. But the Royal Legion, my men are lost, are there. Still got these Fires and Swordmasters. Two really uber tier units. Well, this, the Fires and Swordmasters most certainly are uber tier. Um, ooh, oh, there's still a lot of elders, though. Yeah, I think if I was Sin, I, I think. You want to hold? I don't know if you need to come in and finish this off. You've arguably suffered enough, and Angmar's not fighting anybody anymore. I'd maybe hold back if I was Sin. I'd let Angmar see, like, if they if they want to come in and finish it off, or, you know, steel bows, you're out of ammunition, you're pretty much just cohort now. No more ammunition from these seafarers, any from, from these, no. Unless maybe he was using them in melee before. Damn, that's a lot of sea. Oh, these guys are celebrating away. Cheering, up, cheering along at the at the sight of this old army, revving themselves up for the final battle. I appreciate it, but I don't know. We might be a bit too preemptive with this celebration. Shield guard, though. Um, oh man, I I love the idea of that shield guard just chewing their way through the remaining barrow whites. I do. Oh, they've taken their bows out. They've taken their bows out. As no, no, I thought those Belagar archers had taken their bows out too. Uh, uh, come on. Right now, I think Merc was coming at him again. Like, these elders need something to deal with. Kiri Peng, Kiri Peng and Melai, yeah. Nah, and there's nothing really fighting Angmar. So, what I would do in this situation if I was Steel Bow Ranger is just wait. Um, obviously, you know, Merkwood has, has got a bone to pick with, um, with Numenor there. Definitely not impressed with the, uh, the you know, evil men um, as they have become. Uh, so I would just let them let them blow off their steam, uh, have their final battle because they'll cleanse a lot of this force. They'll weaken the Farzim Sword Masters. Those Farzim Sword Masters will defeat the elders, especially as as beaten up as the elders should be now. They will slice them down, but that's going to really deal with the the major nuisance that. You got because those fires and sword masters get in amongst your lines and it's this it's this heavily armored just grinder that is the gardens of Carndum and the pikes that's the nuisance and these hammer guard i think those hammer guard are freaking fine i'm not seeing a drop of blood on any of them i think they've been really healthy and they will they'll you know they'll need something elite to deal with them there's only a few trolls left so they're not really gonna and up against the very heavily skilled forces of uh of Numenor, it's not really going to be able to do too much. Unless the Edge of the Blade... Yeah, he's fighting away. If the Edge of the Blade fights at the very end here, 
um, and he doesn't admit defeat or there is no sort of mass rout, it's going to be dicey. And the question is whether or not Steelbow Ranger is going to allow Sen. I love that. Oh, that's fantastic. So he's got this like bulge here that he's fighting out and he's actually protecting that from uh, from a cavalry charge. That's really good. I mean, Sen, of course, is very, very, you know, he really is good at the game. So he is watching out for his flanks. Um, like, this is a bad thing that I'm... Well, this is something I'm really bad for, just throwing my forces into the fight without watching their backs um, with, a, with a unit of spears or something like that. What we got? Nah, we need those elders broken. Every swing from the elder is really damaging a Pharisim Swordmaster or a Royal Legionary. Royal Legionary. Uh, broken there. Come on, elders, break. That's the Hiri Peng out of there. But as I say, oh, no, no, I wouldn't. No, no, there's no no need for Steelbow Ranger to allow Numenor to reform. You're much better off just jumping at him. And, oh, wait. No, he's just forming up really close. Ooh. He allows Sin to sort of reorganize and reform, which there's still, he's trying to do that. You can see he is, he's, sorting his, he's sorting himself out, but as he's sorting himself out, He's leaving himself open to be sliced down by a few elders, but now that they're fighting to the death, poor Golden. So yeah, you need to reform. And it looks like Steelbow Ranger is going to be a gentleman about it. Let me zoom out for a second. There's a few... No, no, there was something over here. Um, what's this red? Oh, are you not here yet? What? Has there been an alliance? Ooh, if that is an alliance, it's interesting. I don't know how Steel War Rangers managed to convince Mirkwood of this. But as I say, Mirkwood's shown, he, they, have, they have definitely shown this desire to kill Numenor. So, definitely fair enough. Those Hiriet could have launched themselves into the Inquisitors there. And, you know, they, they wouldn't have killed them, but they would have done a bit of damage for sure. And now, it's it's going to be up to, yeah. I mean, still, well, Ranger's got to make this attack because Sin's still got some ammunition to hurl out. Uri 8 coming in. They're just, yeah, they're not, they're already shaken. They're, they're really not going to achieve too much here. Stab, stab, stab. Good little counter attack there. Um, armor upgrade be damned with this armor piercing attack. But hey, it's one or two. They'll, they'll definitely kill uh, a shield guard or two. Uh, maybe even get a lucky scratch up against a Royal Legionnaire. And that's them gone now. That is... We didn't receive any announcement about it, but surely that's them finished off. What is... Uh, what's all this over here? This is where the... The Inquisitors are waiting. Uh, as I say, this is really... As, as much as I have faith in the, the grinder, that is the, the Pike and Guardian line, I think that those... The cavalry are where... Um, where Steel Bow Ranger... I'm probably just called Steel Bow. Uh, where I think Steelbow is going to have his his victory here. Oh, well, saying that though, this is just seafarers backed up by archers on this line. They will get chewed through. Looks like the stalker forces are charging on in now. Two units of stalkers, one very badly damaged. The riders coming around the back there. The royal guard starting to well, trying their best to follow them. Oh dearie me. And what you got? Kyriak there running off. Orc fellers just hoping to be forgotten about. Um, it's very likely, like, Sin's not going to forget about them, but it's very likely that Sin will have to send his troops to elsewhere and then open up a flag for those, those fellers. It's not so much that he's going to not want to keep a unit there, he's just not, he's not going to be able to. And that's going to be a big, beefy unit of, of fellers just crashing into his flank. We got, yeah, no. He's coming closer and closer. Hammer guard there appearing. Oh, there is a clash. That's the Shadow Bows. Um, shadow Bows and Seafarers sort of... No, no, they weren't caught out of position. I think that was sort of part of the position. But either way, they are struggling there. I see Seafarers having some victory. As soon as those trolls go down, I think it will get better. The Royal Guard having to really stretch themselves out to protect everything. As the mob starts to appear. Yeah, they're going to come in the right flank there. Oh, 
Now, because he's got three units, he could have two of them run over here, and then one of them can sort of slink back. But yeah, good micro from Sen. Just being able to focus on all of this. Fires and Swordmasters. Oh my goodness me. Fires and Swordmasters versus Snagus Stalkers. The battle of the century there, I suppose. Uh, but the real clash um, with these, with this sturdy phalanx, is now cracking into the uh, the Royal Leech of Armenolos. And as I say, we've clashed in now, so I'm, I'm going to see these Orc Fellers in a second running around the back. And it's sort of his defeat is certain across this line. Even for the Royal Legion, they're not going to be able to face up against this. Numenorean cohort trying their very best. Over here as well. Anywhere that we've got these this black armor is uh, is going very nicely. The Fires and Swordmasters are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Hammer Guard now, though. Hammer Guard are able to achieve a lot of things, but there are few individuals that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Fires and Swordmasters. And we might be getting a break from the Snagus Stalkers, but that's not really going to affect anybody around them. Everybody else should be quite happy. I'm just impressed that Sin has been able to sort of hold back these these wargs and, uh, and really deny uh, a good charge. Shield Guard revolving around, but yet Orc Fellers there, they're about to clash in. Shield Guard having to be taken off the front line to go and, uh, and respond to them. Which is meaning that the Royal Legion Menelos, who are already struggling, are now uh, even more outnumbered. As, yeah, it's two units of Orc Fellers, so once again, he can sort of stretch around, attack in different places. There's just so many, so much that Angmar has left. Oh, wow! Looks like there was sort of a little lurch forward, and that was exactly what the Royal Legion wanted. Getting in range there. Orc Fellers clashing into the back now, or the front. Thank goodness for these, uh, these shield guard. But this is not really who the shield guard want to be fighting. They'd much rather use their armor piercing rather than sort of stab through a very lightly armored enemy. Are some swordmasters struggling there? I guess it's maybe the heavy armor of the the Gundabad guard mixed in with uh, a few sturdy hammer strikes. But surely that will stabilize. It's balanced now. I think it should go back to victory as certain. Uh, these trees have not been, I mean, they're getting in the way, of course, but hopefully they haven't been as uh, bad as they could have been. I do love it when people do fight out in the open for a better better viewing experience, but yeah, we've done the best we can. Warg Riders coming in. Bouncing. Yeah, no, that was sort of a bounce. I didn't see too many casualties there from the Shield Guard. Um, you know, as... Linking back to my previous comment, melee cavalry can charge. You know, it's and some melee cavalry can charge very, very effectively. Like these wargs can, if they can get a good hit here, which I think they're about to. Ooh, they, they did actually. Yep, they've absolutely ravaged down to 53 of those poor seafarers, 52 even. And this is this is from a melee cavalry. You know, you're still a large unit. You, you should still try to charge with these units if the opportunity presents itself. It's just not what their what their main purpose is. You know, it's their wargs. They're meant to be slicing people down. Uh, well, slicing cavalry down primarily. Um, everybody's playing cyberpunk right now. It's uh, this. I a lot of people maybe even be too young to sort of remember this, but when um, All Out New Vegas came out. This really reminds me of that of that stage, because uh, Fallout New Vegas came out. I was that was during my like Gary's mod roleplay days, and all the servers were empty because everybody was playing Fallout New Vegas. I looked at my friends list; everybody was on Fallout New Vegas. It's it's the same now, and it's it's nice. It makes me feel a little bit nostalgic. Um, yeah, uh, nostalgic for those times, I suppose. But no, I, I really um, I. <laughs> I know it's a bit like it's got its memes and so on, but I'm, I'm glad that people are enjoying it because it was something I was so worried I'd been alright. And, and, you know, by no fault of CD Projekt Red, but I was worried that they would, uh, that they just wouldn't be able to live up to, to what had been built up around them. But they've, they took their time and the, the, the issues, I'm sure, will be repaired. I'm really impressed by the shield guard there. With how, with how well they've been able to sort of deal with the Orc Fellers. Those Orc Fellers were used perfectly, but, uh, oh, good catch here. Good catch. I see Steelbow's got his own micro to deal with as well, and he's showing some good, good skill with that, but 
It, it, you're always going to get caught out. I'm surprised that guy's not routed. One man left in that unit. Good stuff. But the Inquisitors are where he's really going to be focusing in on. And uh, it is just a matter of time now. Unfortunately, the Arts are just like the bulk of the fighting is happening in this little tree line. So we can't really see too well. But we'll, we'll settle here for a second and watch the Royal Legion. Royal Legion, I think, are my... One of my favourite looking units in the game. Uh, actually, currently my um, my not screensaver, um, my my background, my desktop background, is that you know that image of the of the Royal Legionary standing there with his forces behind him. I don't remember who drew that actually. Um, yeah, shoot. But no, I've, I've seen he's got a lot of really nice work. Uh, he's got some Erdluin dwarves sort of standing by as well. I've got that image. Uh, somewhere sorted out too so you know it's um, some really nice stuff it's uh, there's if i was a very rich man i would love to just go and like commission art left and right just yeah i would just grab some of these artists and be like hey <laughs> draw me this please um that would be i'd spend so much money just doing stupid stuff like that but no it'd be really nice uh, I have got a few things done on Fiverr for, uh, for various works uh, from YouTube and so on, but I've never, never really delved too much into it. So we have had the Numenorean General taken out there, and that's even the great morale of the Numenorean cohort has been broken there. Just being surrounded, suffering so many losses, losing your general like that, and I think that's going to cause a flood. And, and the fear causing Barrowites too, that's always this constant threat when you're up against Angmar. Um, I think that's that really. So I'll talk about it a bit now as we get into the closing stages. Um, so it really was just a case of, of two new players, like two very experienced players and two new players. That's um, you know, and we we can't dig at these new players too much. You know, it's not you know we we all have these bad games in the beginning, and um, you know they 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 showed they showed talent. They did. It's just um, at that killer spirit that, that comes in only really after you feel confident in your abilities because um, nobody wants to mess up and it's it's a lot it feels a lot safer to be defensive than it does to to you know grab your enemy by, enemy by the throat there because um, if you if you try and be aggressive and it screws up you're like damn oh well you know that was really that was really rough I've got a cat scratching my door so i'll really rattle through the the ending stuff here but yeah um and I, I, I don't think they did anything too bad. It was just, just defensively minded play. Um, and when you've got guys like Steelbow and and Sin, like working together against you, like hell, you could have had you could have had two, you know, quite experienced players here. That situation would have still played out the same. They would have still gone rap, you know, really taken out. Um, anything really nice. Yeah, Gardens of Cardoom and the Pikes. Actually, surprisingly few kills from the Pikes. Uh, a lot more kills from the Guardians than I expected. Um, Stalker's good stuff. Uh, but you can see, where are the Inquisitors? Where are the Wargs? Wow! I thought we'd see more from all that. Interesting. Okay, the kills are... Kills good about, uh, the, the kills are coming from different places than I imagined, actually. Okay, very cool. I, and it's quite an even sort of split across a lot of things. Anyway, um, you know, good stuff from everybody. I think that the, the final nail was just the fact that Edge of the Blade really poured his efforts into hurting Numenor. Um, had we come in with those spearmen and just jabbed the Inquisitors in the back, um, that wouldn't have won it. But, like, and it was it was charging, it was fighting the, the Elders as well. That was a... Uh, yeah, no, no. Like, that was basically the point where I was like, nah, Sin's got no no way to come back from this, unfortunately. Um, but good, well played from everybody, you know? It was, it's, it's always tough to jump into a into a free-for-all. Um, and especially, yeah, just, just kind of read the area, read the room and so on. Um, the cat's calmed down, so I'll take a few seconds more. Um, but no, and Dol Amroth is tough. Dol Amroth is, is, is a, it's a very difficult faction to use if you don't, if you cannot really utilize your cavalry well. And um, just because there's wargs on the field and there's inquisitors on the field, yeah. Um, had, but had he, had he been a bit more aware of like what the types of cavalry are and so on, he could have, he, Dol Amroth does have the tools to deal with something like that, I really feel. 
Um, I think Dol Amroth could do with maybe a few little alterations for sure, and I think it will receive that, but like, they, they're a lot more powerful than people sort of give them credit for sometimes. I think they really can, especially in an open field, they can hurt you. They most certainly can. I think there was a bit too much focus into Dol Amroth's lower tier units, when really Dol Amroth's infantry shines a lot more at the top. And had we taken a few of those instead, been played more aggressively, then we could have maybe seen something something pretty pretty wild there in response to the Angmuram attack. Um, and anyway, yeah, we'll probably jump out there because I could ramble for a while, but I won't. I've been rambling a fair bit in this battle. So uh, once again, if you sent me that hideout battle, can't remember who you were, really sorry about that. I'll have a search through the logs. Hopefully I'll find you today. But if not, please give me a shout. Um, I hope I, I didn't, I don't, I'm pretty sure I didn't just steal it off a of Discord. I'm pretty confident I didn't steal it off a of Discord. Uh, somebody gave it to me. But yeah, um, and then yeah, uh, I'll see you guys later.